Hello everybody. Welcome back to Let's Play Deadly Premonition 2. Last time we met Emma, who restores skateboards. Because we broke our skateboard trying to get to the uh, person that found Lisa's body. Today, well, now that we have a better skateboard, we're going to like clear the jump and go check it out. Where did it fall? Got me up here unironically doing this view. Well, while we're going for it, let's talk. It really seemed like you knew who Galena Clarkson was. Well, I've never actually talked to her, but it's a small town. Pretty much all folks know who the Clarksons are, and Galena's supposed to be extra scary compared to the rest of them. Back when we saw her in town, I felt like she was glaring right at me, so I got real scared. No one will come out and say it, but I'm pretty sure they're all relieved that she was the killer. That stopped your talking? Oh my you god. You didn't even twitch when you saw Galena's body. Why would I? Dead things can't hurt us, right? Girls your age don't usually think that way. Do you have kids, Agent York? No, I don't. I'm not married either. Then you have no idea how girls my age usually think. Besides, I'm used to seeing dead bodies thanks to CSI. Especially dismembered corpses like hers. You know, for a so-called profile and professional, you're pretty clueless. In that case, allow me to apologize. But don't you think it's a bit of a leap to discount my observational abilities simply because corpses don't scare you? I don't know. I mean, you're completely wrong. Do you know what I was thinking back there then? Of course not. I'm not a pro. The same goes for me, Patty. No manner of pro could ever know 100% of what another person is thinking. Unless, of course, that pro has a mental connection with them, like Zack and I have. If I was telepathic, I wouldn't have joined the FBI. I would have taken over a small country or become a messiah. Now what? he's making crazy leaps. I will admit, though, Patty, I feel like you and I have something in common. We definitely have similarities, even though they aren't as strong as the ones that Zack and I share. Whatever. Perhaps you and I grew up under similar circumstances. We're both unique cases. Huh? Unique cases? In your case, your beautiful mother's second husband became your daddy. But then your mama got sick, forcing you to take care of things, while you use CSI as your escape. Would you just knock it off? I ain't trying to act like some tragic heroine here. And I don't care that my daddy isn't the same color as me. You're way more narrow-minded than I took you for, Agent York. Narrow-minded? You're just realizing this now? Of course I'm narrow-minded. <laughs> I'm a selfish man who lives life according to his own rules, with no interest in common sense. Naturally, this makes me uh -huh. terrible at reading situations, and I often end up angering people by total accident. But is it really that big of a problem? I still made yeah. a contribution to society by solving numerous difficult cases. He and does I'm have still a point there. Terribly charming. He actually is pretty charming. And I'm still terribly charming. You and I have absolutely <laughs> nothing in common. <laughs> what kind of circumstances does a kid even need to end up like you? Try asking Zach. It's not my place to answer that one. <sighs> yeah, because you know Zach was a uh, coping mechanism for uh, him witnessing his, like, you know, the murder-suicide of his parents. It's pretty deep shit, I'm just saying. Can, can, can we talk? If this town has there we a go. symbol, it's got to be that bridge hanging over the bayou. Lift bridges are truly a rarity. Reminds me of Duluth, Minnesota. Remember what happened there? That man went to such great lengths to collect his victims' tongues. You know, the one who would French kiss them every day as they slowly decompose. As I drove to the station after his arrest, he started lecturing me on the proper way to give someone a kiss. Anyway, back to Duluth. They have a famous <laughs> lift bridge there called the Aerial Lift Bridge. The lift bridge here is the first one we've seen since then. But this one looks a lot smaller than the Aerial Lift Bridge. Its smaller size was most likely chosen due to the width of the river and the sea level of this area. The height and structure of a bridge is what determines which sort of boats can travel down the river. Normal bridges' base heights are set at a higher point so that boats can freely pass underneath them. 
but I imagine it would be difficult to create a bridge with a large arch here due to the river width and the sea level. That's why we're seeing all these mobile bridges, such as lift bridges and drawbridges around here. As far as Louisiana goes, it appears that they've built mobile bridges over most of the bayous. Fascinating, isn't it, Zach? So many different types of bridges. I'm curious to learn even more about bridges now. Let's do some detailed research next time we get the chance. Wait, I'm in the wrong spot. Sorry, it's one more road over. I do not wish to be at the plantation. I definitely don't want to be there. <laughs> Ooh. We're almost there. No need to start another convo with Zach. Even though the convos are pretty good. I'm still not over how self-aware York is. I don't know if that makes it better or worse. So I probably should start, like, kidding out the, uh... Skateboard. I like to do tricks. Is this the right way? No, one more over. Okay. Good lord. Hey, want to talk about bridges? Why? I've become obsessed with bridges, Zach. And there's no turning back now. Remember what we saw on our way here? Back when we were driving that hybrid car before we switched over to the skateboard. We passed over the Lake Pontchartrain Causeway, the longest bridge over water in the entire world. Remember the sudden downpour that made it impossible for us to see the road? The rain was so torrential that we couldn't see more than a few miles ahead of us. I'm sure local drivers are used to that sort of thing. They were all going normal speeds. I bet that scene reminded you of a certain film or perhaps a certain person. Violent City, 1970, directed by Sergio Salim. I only ever saw it on TV when I was a kid, so I don't remember it very well. But I definitely remember that it featured a bridge, a long bridge, during the New Orleans part. That's the one thing I remember. That bridge must have been the Lake Pontchartrain Causeway. And the film starred Charles Bronson. Charles Bronson. Charles Bronson. What an amazing sound. You couldn't possibly <laughs> find another man whose name matches his appearance so perfectly. Yes, yes, of course I know that Charles Bronson isn't his real name. Charles Dennis Buczynski. That's his real name, but he's Bronson, period. Zach, what's your favorite Bronson film? Death Wish, The Magnificent Seven, Rider on the Rain, or Farewell Friend? They're all masterpieces, but to me, his great... Okay. Don't mind me, just trying to figure out where the hanging, wait. Okay, I feel fatigue setting in. Where am I? Oh, okay. We're not far. <clears throat> I'm surprising that both are kind of equidistant away, but whatever. Am I in the wrong? No, okay, I can just stay along this area. <clears throat> I think. Maybe. I'm not sure. Okay, yep, there we go. Seriously, I did doze off for a bit, so I have no idea how much I'm gonna have to edit out of this part, but. Yeah, yeet! He's done it.
Now what? <clears throat> okay, just advance deeper. So I wonder what the farmer is going to be like. Possibly insane. It's kind of a staple for farmers. The board is at 97% health. You know, these dogs. Oh, but that was an item. Are there actual bees here? Nope. I refuse to pull out my gun, even though I can probably use it to get me stamp progression. But we're here. Thompson's Farm. Hey, Agent York. Are you sure you really want to talk to this guy? He kind of scares me. Hattie, there's no need to worry. Just hide behind me and you'll be fine. <laughs> doesn't uh, bring me much confidence there, York. <clears throat> Chuck Thompson, you were the first person to find Lisa's body, correct? I'm FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. Please, call me York. That's what everyone calls me. Uh, Agent York. Seems like he ain't in the mood for talking. <laughs> Chuck Thompson, may I have a word with you? I'm looking for the one who fired the pistol at heaven. Oh my god, he's a short guy. You trying to say I gotta aim up to shoot because of my height? Hmm? Chuck Thompson. Not at all. I was merely quoting the skeletal gentleman's oracle. Skeletal gentleman? You ain't making a lick of sense. What do you all want anyway? What do y'all come here to waste my precious time for? I'm currently running a race around town thanks to you, who fired the starting shot. The murderer and I are competing to see who can cross the finish line first. Unfortunately, the murderer got a generous head start on me. If he gets away from me, I'll lose. But if I can catch up to him, then I'm sure I'll win. So please, Chuck, tell me. How did you find Lisa's body? Her body was hidden under a bridge on the bayou very close to the Mississippi River. It's got to be at least a few miles away from your farm in this swamp, right? Now, the Clarksons are the folks who gave me the damn permission to farm crawdaddies here in the first place. Now, why the hell would I ever want to kill that little girl? Then what were you doing out there? Hmm. You know, lately I've been seeing a queer boat around these parts. Ain't too big. Probably only holds five or six. It's got a deep draft. Assholes think they can just drive right through my turf, right through my dang crawdad farm. So you gave chase, which led you to Lisa's body. Yeah, that's right. Fucking poachers. Where did the poachers go? Oh, hell if I know. Fog was thick that day, thicker than usual. So I lose sight of them. The next thing I know, I'm under that goddamn bridge. Then I felt a chill run up my spine. And I knew. So I drove up to the bank and got out. And there she was. Strung up on that there altar. Did you know Lise personally? Yeah, I knew her a little. She never showed me no disrespect. Unlike the rest of those damn Clarksons. They so rotten I can smell them here. Same as the shit at the bottom of this here swamp. Heavy, heavy. Yeah. They was a little better when their boy Lenny was still around. Lenny? Yeah. Leonard. 
PJ's son. He never showed me no disrespect, neither. And he's the one who gave me permission to farm here. But... Well, ever since he left home, his whole family's gone straight down to Shitter. This was the only decent one left. She was wise, just like Lenny. Ain't right, I tell you. Heavy, heavy, heavy. Now I'm done talking, goddammit. Now go on, <laughs> get the hell out of here. Philip mentioned something about his son leaving home. That must be Lenny. Did Not you know about Lenny. that? Lenny. Everyone in town knows about it. Well, then care to explain? By the way, Zach. I'm not do from you town. What we saw when we were skipping stones? That boat with the dragonfly crest. Zach, no matter where we go in this town, we're constantly assaulted by information related to the Clarkson family. Just where is that skeletal gentleman trying to lead us? Well, okay. Talisman has been unlocked. Airboat ride has been unlocked. We successfully found the one who fired the pistol at heaven. Now we need to visit the White Hall of Beds. You know, Zach, it almost feels like we're orienteering here. <clears throat> Doesn't it remind you of our training in Quantico? W what are you pointing at, Patty? Oh, I... Is she is she tea posing? Or maybe not. Knife master bonus? Uh, how? I didn't do anything. We can do swamp rides, but I'm not gonna do that right now. Just gonna go ahead and do that, and fast travel on over to the church. Seriously, I unironically like uh, Chuck. There we go. He's just a regular guy trying to take care of his crawdad farm. Them dang poachers trying to ruin his day. And here we are. Shouldn't be too difficult. Yes, yes, the evangelical church. Yes. Hey, Agent York. Just so you know, dealing with Pastor Sanders... It's gonna be a big pain in the butt. You're telling me. A big pain in the butt? That's what I said. I did his side quests. I already know. Well, some of them. But I guess you have no choice but to obey your oracle, huh? <clears throat> well, okay then. This chapter seems to be advancing pretty quick in the grand scheme of things, I guess. I don't like hospitals. Why not? They soup folks up with medicine, cut them up, and then they try and act like they're your friends. Something ain't right about that, you know. <laughs> it goes against the laws of nature. Plus, she ain't too wrong. This is a church. So you got a pastor, a servant of God, actually playing God with his patience. I think you have a point there, Patty. These days we can neither determine death nor reproduce without the help of modern medicine. Yeah, our world's become quite an unnatural one. Oh, excuse me. This is Lucare. You need to watch where you're going. Or someone might end up tripping you. Zack, it's her. The stylish woman who watched Lise die. <laughs> I've been waiting for you, lost lamb. Uh, hi there, Pastor. Would you mind letting go of me? I'm in a bit of a hurry right now. So, 
pitiful. Boy, if you don't. The Lord hungers. <sighs> Here we go again. Uh, what? Pitiful. <laughs> Truly pitiful, my little lamb. Uh, no, neither Zack nor I. Oh, so pitiful. So pitiful, just pitiful. <laughs> the Lord hungers. One can of spam, one can of red beans, and one can of what? You are to offer up the taboo trinity. <gasps> taboo. What? But don't you mean the holy? Trinity? Oh, how I pity you! <laughs> Unlike us humans, the Lord never errs. Now, my pitiful agent, bring forth the taboo trinity at once. For it is the will of the Lord our God. See? I told you this was going to be a pain in the butt. But Zack and I need to go after that stylish woman. Too late now. <laughs> we need to obey God's will. The Lord hungers. Yes, Come we on, heard you. Hurry it up. We need to go. Well, Zack, I don't know what to say. First an oracle, and now an order from God. Maybe this is the trial that will yield the ticket to the goddess. Either way, it looks like we have no choice but to gather the taboo trinity. I guess it just goes to show that small towns are always filled with the bizarre and unpredictable. To see York vexed like that, though, that was... That was good. That was good. The taboo trinity. Um, why would that have canned spinach? Red beans and rice at the diner, can of spam. Okay, um, the Lord has very eclectic tastes. <laughs> Taboo Trinity? What's taboo about red beans and rice? Red beans and rice is the bomb, yo. Shit. I love red beans and rice. Ain't nothing wrong with spinach either. Spam? I mean, I, I gotta... I, I gotta fry Spam to really enjoy it. I, I cannot eat Spam right out the can. No. That, that shit needs to be cooked. I can do Vienna sausages right out the can, but, or, well, not, it's not even a can. It's just like a little tin. I guess it's a tin for both of them. Not really a can. I don't know. The only, like, meat byproduct I'm fine with, I guess, well, no. I was about to say corned beef hash, but I got to cook that too. I have had... Um, potted meat. I, I didn't. I never really cooked that. If you're not familiar with tinned meat byproducts, you have no idea what I'm talking about. Sorry for hitting the mic there. Yeah, the big three are like spam, Vienna sausages, and potted meat. Potted meat is just like blended up pork, chicken, and beef. Okay, hold on. And Vienna sausages are just pork, chicken, and beef in sausage form. And Spam is pork, chicken, and beef in block of meat form. <laughs> 264 for Spam. All the ingredients for a common sausage stuffed into a can instead of an intestine. Mr. York. Spam, huh? You a pot of meat kind of guy? This game just got so southern. Like, I, I know it takes place in Louisiana, but damn. No, Melvin. 
I've simply gotten myself tangled up in a little mess. Oh, I get it. Mr. York. The Lord hungers! <laughs> <laughs> yes, apparently the Lord is starving, and I'm a lamb with no sense of direction. All right. Well, now let's get that red beans and rice. The loading screens, though, good lord. Here we are. Oh god, there's gonna be a loading screen as we, like, enter. Seriously, why does the mystic place, the voodoo place, have spinach? Spinach ain't voodoo related. Well, I get. I mean, it does make Popeye strong out of nowhere. Well, I guess it could be argued that Popeye is not eating spinach. He is, in fact, eating steroids. Ooh. Ooh, the air out there don't feel right today. You feel it too, honey? Is yeah, this place a bowling food? alley or a restaurant? Oh my lord, what's wrong, honey? Can't tell the difference. <laughs> It says restaurant right there on the outside. And how do you explain that then? That's so the customers can bowl while they eat. Convenient, ain't it? <laughs> if you want to bowl, honey, you'll have to ask Mrs. Carpenter to open up the lane for you. But if you just want to eat, then all you need to do is call my name. Got it? <laughs> oh. All right. Good lord, this is southern. Shrimp and grits, duck hash, chocolate sundae, magnet, jambalaya to FBI. $30? What? Also, they said come here for red beans and rice. Where's the red beans and rice? You don't understand, Alexis. The lord hungers. Um... Also, I already used that as the title for a part. Oh no, I'm gonna have to be creative. I haven't eaten in a minute, so I guess we can eat that. Um, Why is red beans and rice missing? Good lord, that happy face. Alexis, could I have some red beans and rice? Thank you. Oh my lord. Sorry, honey, but no can do. What? We only serve red beans and rice on Mondays. What? Okay, first of all, red beans and rice is an all-week food. Like, so why are you only serving it on Monday? Second of all, what? That's a meal you eat when you're busy. Like folks usually are on Monday. No, you can eat it whenever. It's been a tradition here in Louisiana for as long as I can remember. Oh god, now I need to go to Louisiana Creole and get some red beans and rice. It's been so long. Whew. Louisiana Creole is a local restaurant chain over here in uh, Detroit. It is good to yo. Wait, honey, don't tell me. You're the type who does your laundry every day? Yeah, no. That's a waste <laughs> of water. Tradition, Zach. This is it. The Deep South. Louisiana. We need to obey tradition here and come back on Monday. Well, looks like that seals the deal for the next part being side quests. It's currently Wednesday, huh? All right. So, yeah, I'll take a look at all the side quests that have opened up for me and, um,. I'll split them up so that we won't have another hour and uh, 50 minute part. Or another part where I'm just like aimlessly wandering around looking for something to do and then I end up doing nothing. It's called preparedness.
Zach. But at the very least, I can go ahead and get this there uh, spinach. It's so weird, but hey, it is what it is. This is a weird combination, too. I guess red beans and rice and spinach, like, on its own isn't that bad. But the spam, you can do so much better than that. I get some actual sausage. Where am I even going? Oh, yeah, right, uh... Oh no, I, I had it. There we go. God, I really am just in by Louisiana Creoles, red beans and rice. Because it is red beans and rice, but then they also add ground beef to it. And then like the cornbread muffins they give you. Oh my God, so good. Now, I was gonna just do a uh, frozen pizza for lunch tomorrow. Nothing's stopping me from swinging on by Louisiana Creole. Especially since one's not too far from me. Hmm. Hmm. Do you carry any canned goods here? Canned goods? The vermin of the grocery <laughs> store? <laughs> Nay, I think not. Understood, Mirror. Well then, if you'll excuse me. Wait. Is this... Woman? Yes. I can see it. I can see the canned good thou seeketh. How intriguing. Well then, where is the canned good I seek? In a place where no man could ever peddle it. I see. In a place where it can't be bought from a person. Got it, Mirror. Twas but a trifle. For the Lord hungers, <laughs> doth he not? I love that everybody knows. They're like, oh, okay, wow, he got him too? Zack, it's in a vending machine. What? It appears that God wants us to go on a wild goose chase all around town. What? What vending machines up here selling canned spinach? I would not trust that. I barely trust the canned goods that come from the neighborhood grocery store. I know you should buy like super local instead of really going to like bigger chains. But, you know, when, when, when the neighborhood place is up here selling stuff that's expired or, you know, had a power outage and, you know, for, for like a couple days and they're still like, yeah, we're going to sell the meat. And like you walk by the meat and it's like, it, it it's smelly and the ground beef or just the beef in general is up here turning gray. It kind of burns you a bit from the like neighborhood spot. I mean, I'll still get like certain things from them, but like for anything that's not like snacks or something to drink, it's like, yeah, I'm good. I even tend to avoid some of the frozen stuff they have. Oh, and there's like a, another like sort of neighborhood grocery store that's no yeah we have two that are like relatively further away 
relatively further away. Like, further away, but relatively close. They tend to have better quality. Oh, and there, there is a third one, but I'm always afraid to go there because it is shady. You know, it, it, it's just always kind of convenient to go to Kroger or Meyer. I don't fucks with Walmart. Is it, can, can it be any vending machine or is it going to be a specific one? The Lord hungers. Y'all don't understand. Of course, there's no vending machine to be seen. No matter. Oh, never mind. This vending machine does not carry what God seeks. Let's move on, Zach. Oh, is it going to be a specific one? That's going to be kind of ridiculous. That is a genuine wild goose chase. But I'm going to try out a hypothesis here. Like, a major item like that, I feel, would have to be at a major location instead of some random vending machine in the middle of nowhere. So what better than the vending machine here? And if it's not here, then I'm going to cave in and look it up because I am not about to go from vending machine to vending machine in this town. Please don't be like a strictly pop vending machine. Well, goddamn. All right. Uh, we're looking it up. Okay. Apparently the very specific vending machine is this one right here. Okay, but yeah, they all are marked on the map. Wow, so without a guide, you really would have to go to like each and every one. That's not good <laughs> at all. But um, yeah, I guess we can do that and Alexis is uh, red beans and rice next time well not next time but the time after next time because the next time is gonna be side quests yo Woo! so yeah i'm gonna like see what i can do and come up with a plan of action for which ones i'm gonna do and then we'll go from there thank y'all for watching have a great day and i'll see you next time for some more let's play deadly premonition 2 the Lord hungers, but hopefully he can uh, hold out for a little while because we're going to be helping out some people next time. Goodbye.